Welcome to our lecture line. Now in this example, it of course at the first sight looks similar to the previous examples, but there's one big difference. Now neither one of the lengths of the copper or the aluminum section is equal to the base length that we calculated the heat transfer for in the past. So now how do we handle that in our special technique? Well what we need to do is we need to come up with the factors that we put in front of the P's in our equation right here. For example, if the length is 0 0.08, that means the factor for the copper section is going to be 1.2 divided by 0 0.8, and that is equal to, let's say, 1.5, and then the, the factor of the other section is going to be 1.2 divided by 2.0, which is equal to 0 0.6. So these now become the factors in the equation that we need to find the heat transfer through the entire section of the two metals. So let's see how that equation works now. So we can say that the power dissipated is equal to 1.5 times the power of the copper times 0 0.6 times the power of the aluminum section. And here's the logic behind that. If the length is less than the base comparison length of 1.2 meters, we have a higher factor, and if the length is longer, that means less heat travels through it, so we have a smaller factor. And then we we'll divide that by the sum of the two, 1.5 times the power transferred in the copper section, plus 0 0.6 times the power transferred to the aluminum section. And that should give us the power transferred to the entire two sections combined. So this is equal to 1.5 times 32.08 plus, oh, not plus, this is multiplied, multiplied times 0 0.6 times 17.08, all divided by 1.5 times 32.08, and this is plus 0 0.6 times 17.08. All right, let's go ahead and calculate that now. So 1.5 times 32.08, plus 0.6 times 17.08 equals, that's in the numerator, now we convert that to the numerator, times 1.5 times 32.08 times 0.6 and times 17.08 equals, and that gives us a heat transfer equal to 8.45 watts. All right. Now, let's do it again the traditional way and see if we get the very same result. Again, we go off the premise that the heat transfer through both sections must be the same because there's only one path, so it has to be the same. So we write in there that K of the copper times the cross-section area of the copper times the difference in the temperature of the copper divided by the length of the copper is equal to K of aluminum cross-section area the change in the temperature, and the length of the aluminum as well. And the one thing that's the same, that's been constant throughout, is that the cross-section area is the same for both sections, so that cancels out. And the length of the aluminum is two and a half times the length of the copper. So we can replace this by 2.5 times the length of the copper, and then these two cancel out as well. We can cross-multiply here, so we end up with 2.5 times 385, which is a constant for copper, times the delta T for the copper is equal to aluminum. That would be 205 times 100 minus the delta T of the copper. Now we only have one unknown in here, so we'll solve for that. But first we have 385 times 2.5, so we get 962.5 times the delta T of the copper is equal to 20,500 minus 205 times the delta T of the copper. Now we can move this to the other side. We add that to this. We get plus 205. So we get 1167.5 times the delta T of the copper equals 20,500, which means that we can now solve for the change in the temperature across the copper section. And we get 17.56 degrees centigrade degrees. All right, that means we can now find the junction temperature in this case. It's 100 minus that. 
So T junction is equal to, it looks like 82.44 degrees centigrade because it's an actual temperature. So now we have the junction temperature and now we're able to find the heat transit through one of the sections. So let's take the copper section. So the dQ dt to the copper section is equal to, we'll take the constant 385 times the cross-sectional area 0.001 times the change in the temperature which we have here 17.56 all divided by the length which in this case is 0.8 so let's find out what that is equal to so times 0.385 divided by 0.8 equals and we get 8.45 which of course is the same what we got over there. Well, not necessarily of course, because I do make mistakes sometimes, quite often actually. But in this case, we didn't, and the two answers are exactly the same. So you can see that we have a nice quick method to do it if we know what the base comparisons are. If we don't, we can do it the traditional way, find the junction temperature first, and then solve for the heat transfer to one of the two sections. And that's how it's done.